vesting interest. I will say once again, if it's meat and it is smoked, I want it in my mouth hole. That's <laughs> I, I need. I don't care where it comes from. I I I, I want to eat the meat, right? So, uh, fifty-two pounds. Let's go. Oh, let's go. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. getting away, and uh, you know, there's something about being by the water or out in the woods and away from it that is just—it's good for your soul. And there you go. Try to target that fish, or we can also do some drift fishing over this area. Oh. You know, put our bait, suspend them three to four foot off the bottom, and do a little bit of drift fishing through here. I use it a lot on the Ohio River. And do well there. I trademarked my sweet ass. Yeah, no, I own sweet ass. No, <laughs> no, you do not own my sweet ass. No. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God, you guys, look at the size of that musky. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, are you kidding me, Eric? Come on, man. Where's the love, brother? Oh, wait a minute. Ah! Oh, holy cow! My goodness, look at the length on this fish. Woo! And you, man! <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I said you're frying the cucumbers, all you're doing. Well, Deep fried pickles are awesome. I don't know how you guys are. A pickles. cucumber is different than a pickle. I really, Vexus? You didn't just say that, did you, Vexus? Cucumber what is do different than a pickle. Is. is it not? I think a pickle is. Pickle, pickle is a pickle. No, it's a cucumber. No, cucumber is a cucumber. Pickled cucumber, Vexus? Yeah, it's a pickled cucumber. Hold up. A pickled... No. When it's... Uh... 30-ish, 30-ish, it's that 29, 29, whatever. Check that out, check that out. Let's go, one more cast, one more cast. Oh, we yeah, 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 baby. <laughs> we so awesome. Look at that hog. Oh, yeah. Look at that hog, man, look at that, look at that rock, man. <laughs> just move your hands below the camera and then rub it real quick and then. Yeah, because that, that'll look good. We just move your hands below the camera. <laughs> That's right. And he's doing rubbing. Rubbing the fish. <laughs> oh my god. No, I ain't gonna do this. It's not it's gonna work. Some Investing interest. I will say once again, if it's meat and it is smoked, I want it in my mouth hole. What's up, everybody? Evening, everyone. Evening, everyone. Chief, how are you? Fish Stacker, how are you? Wondrous, wondrous. It is Sunday night. We know what that means. It is cast and camo time. Welcome in, everybody, to your favorite Sunday night show. I have another awesome guest tonight. Some of you are going to know who it is. Some of you are not going to know who it is, which is the, the beauty of it. Um, we're going to start out with a couple housekeeping items, as always. Don't forget, give us a subscribe on YouTube, Cast and Camo TV. Subscribe and like and comment. Send it to all your friends. Tell them all about us. Wait a Don't minute. What? <laughs> you just... <laughs> okay, that's right. so I was checking. Yeah, that's right. You got to oh, get the it. snap. We're in it. Let's, let's yep. do this. I'm, I'm loving it. I'm down for this. For everybody watching on YouTube or listening to any other platform, we are live every Sunday night on Cast and Camo on Twitch. So we are live right now, so you might hear us talk to people that are in our chat that we're interacting with. 
um, we'll do our best to call out those questions and to make sure that you understand that that's who we're talking to. So you don't just think we're pulling things out of our rear ends. Um, but check us out on, if you want to watch us live, we're on Cass and Camo on Twitch every Sunday night, 7 p.m. Central Time. Don't forget, we are brought to you by Texas Select Seasoning and Carolina Bass Co. Cast and Camo as your discount codes. Use Cast and Camo for your code and get 15% off both companies. Great stuff. Uh, recap from last week. Last week, we had Greg Weller from the Minnesota Dark House and Angling Association. We're about to get some cold weather here in Minnesota this week. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. We're going to be in the mid-teens for about the next 12 days straight. It's going to be great. Um, just down on the lake Friday, 63 degree water temp still. Gross. Like, it should be way colder than that right now, but it's 63 degree water temp. So that's, like, no that's, wonder everything's yeah. off. That's gross. But we're going to be <laughs> making ice. And that means for me, I'm hopefully in the next handful of weeks on the ice fishing or spearing or both. <laughs> Who knows? So ice is going to be forming. Um, another thing I was going to bring up, a lot of great deer hunting pictures, at least being posted in my Discord, I think Chief's Discord as well. Uh, everybody's shooting their deer. Everybody's posting their pics of their deer. We've got a bunch of new people streaming on Twitch hunting, which is, for me, super fun and exciting. I, I'm, whether I inspired people or not, I hope I did. And I think it's great. And uh, I, hope, I will hope to see more people out there. And yeah, Christine, Christine is processing all the deer that everybody's shooting except Hi. for me. Hi. Yeah. Um, so great, great to see. Anywho, is everybody ready? What are we going to talk about tonight? Should we talk fishing? Should I'm we, ready. I'm should ready. we talk about custom rods? I think we shall. Let's talk to Andrew from SCR, Southside Custom Rods. Let's bring Andrew in real quick. Get that all set up. Look, we, we've made it this far without any technical errors, so I think we're winning. Oh, yeah, we're uh, we, we we are winning. <laughs> There's Andrew. Andrew, good evening. Happy Sunday to you, What's sir. What's going on, guys? I'm jealous oh, of your little, cool backgrounds. Little this, a little yeah. Your your background's way cooler because it's a bunch of cool stuff that none mm -hmm. of us have or will ever probably have, um, or be able to even do. Like I just I I don't have the capability my hands are not capable to make things they just do you, can't have, do turkey, it. Do you have turkey feathers on your wall and a nice boat sitting back there the you know, kind of, yeah. Yeah. Come on. we're in the right place See? that's right look at that yeah so for, the, for everybody that doesn't know who this is this is andrew andrew does <laughs> also stream on twitch andrew k underscore scr uh maybe sarah can you get yeah give uh, yeah, andrew a shout out yeah, we do. Sure. I do have exclamation point SCR that brings up Andrew's uh, his Instagram and it brings up his merch. So you can check check those out. I don't think I linked to his Facebook, but if you go to his Twitch page, Andrew K underscore SCR, you can you can get to all of his good links. So welcome, Andrew. And let's let's talk some custom rods. So the first question that I have, yeah. how yeah. old were you when you built your first rod? Oh, geez. Um, 34? No. Um, probably 31. Yeah, about hey. 31. Uh, I'm 43 now. I've been doing it since uh, about 2011 is when I started playing with it. Um, and the way, the way I'm sure you, can, you the way I got into it, um, right before our drum season, typically our drum season is in a September, beginning of October. And that's when our big bull reds, or we don't call them bull reds, but the big, big red fish, um, they come out of the Chesapeake Bay. And if the wind blows the right way, we can push them up on the beach and we can, you know, catch them uh, on the beach and stuff. And right before the season, I think it was 2010, um, I broke a rod. I exploded casting, I was shark fishing, I cast a chunk of albacore and it blew up. And, and I was talking to, a longtime friend of mine, a guy that kind of got me the drum fishing, he's basically like, what am I going to do now? I'm down a rod, blah, blah, blah. He's like, you need to go see Uncle Ronnie and get a 1509. And I was like, what the hell is a 1509 and who's Uncle Ronnie? Um, and Uncle Ronnie was a, a local rod builder that had been building for like 45 years or something ridiculous like that. And uh, he actually passed away a couple years ago, unfortunately. But 
Um, but I went over to his house with, with my buddy Mark. We, you know, his shop was very similar to mine, just a little more dungy and dusty. But, uh, you know, watching him, he was working on a rod and watching him spin it and everything else was very fascinating to me. And I've always been into, like, how things work. Um, and I bought a rod from him and I started hanging out there. And one thing led to another. And then I started building rods there. Um, and then after my divorce was finalized in 2012, I moved everything to my living room, um, <laughs> my, my house, and uh, made it officially a business in 2014. Um, and been building rods since then. So, but it's not your. This is not your main job. We were kind of discussing that earlier today. Now right. I don't want you to talk about your main job, but no, just no, to no, let everybody know, this is. Um, would you yeah. consider it a hobby or was it a second? job second business um the last last five six seven years has probably been a second job um i've slowed down a lot since i've had my second kid um because obviously you know spending more time with the family and everything else so it's 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 still i, I still consider it a second job um a glorified hobby if you want but uh and I, I do have a full-time job with a defense contractor and it's um that takes up a lot of my time obviously but uh no, it, it's fun, but you know, it's it's paid for everything you see here right now. So, um, you know, that's a bonus. Yeah. How many how many rods total? If you had, do you keep track? First of all, do you keep track? And if you do or don't, how many rods have you built total overall since you started? Overall, um, probably close to five hundred. Try to make a guess. Wow. I don't do it as seriously as some of the other guys do. I've got a good good friend of mine. Um, he builds several hundred a year. Um, actually, I know I've got a few friends that build a bunch like that. Um, but, you know, they're doing it more as a second job to supplement their income. Um, I know one guy does it full time. He builds like, he has to build four or five rods a day just to, to survive. And that's, yeah, and that's, I don't want it to ever become like, I have to do this to survive. You know what I mean? Like, it's just. Yeah. I have fun doing, it. you know, I, 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 I mostly do saltwater stuff. Um, the past couple of years, I've only done surf, surf rods, pier rods, stuff like that. And occasional boat rods, but mostly saltwater stuff. How long are the, your, you say the saltwater rods, how long are these rods that you're making? Generally anywhere from seven feet to 13 feet. The big, that's a lot of <laughs> surface area right there. Yeah, we always, um, I've, I've, I've had Wolfram in my stream before and joking around, you know, this is, This is a rod that he builds. This is a one of his ice rods, right? Yeah. This is the butt end of a 14 foot surf rod. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you can see it's a, it's a little different. And I'm gonna I'm gonna do this this ice rod. He sent this to me. I'm gonna do it this winter, probably in January, on stream so everybody can laugh at me because I don't know what I'm gonna do with that little tiny thing, but. Um, now, most of the surf rods we do are anywhere from 9 foot to, to 13. Most of them are 13 footers uh, for throwing 8 ounces in a chunk of bait or 10 ounces in a big chunk of bait and stuff like that. But I, okay, I, mean, I want to pause for a second. Let's go back to the ice rod because that was going to be one of the one of the questions I had written down. And I knew you did big rods. And I I kind of laugh when, when I hear Austin talk about his ice rods. He's not talking about an actual ice rod. He's talking about a rod that I would probably use on an everyday basis because it's just shorter than all of his SCR rods. But how different actually is it to make an ice rod, say that's 36 inches at the longest compared to a 13 foot? Is it the same? It's, it's, I would assume it's the same concept. Yep. You're just dialing everything back as far as mathematics and measurements yep. from way back. Yeah big to small is that um, accurate or is it completely like it's just completely different it's 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 simple, similar similar is, is is in the process because you're you know you're building the handle you're wrapping the guides and everything else but it's completely different because you know the the, the top section of a of a 13 foot rod you know doesn't bend that much as this thing does you know so you know, it, you have to have a little bit more finesse on the ice rods because you're using something that's, you know, the, the size of pencil lead that you're, you know, you're trying to put a guide on and, and make sure you don't break it. Stuff like that. So like, I, right. I, I don't even know what to do. Um, and when Wolfram sent it to me, I, I packaged it, you know, on stream and everybody was kind of laughing. I was like, man, I'm going to have to 
watch a few of your streams to figure out what I'm supposed to do with this thing. Like, I don't even know. Like, the, yeah, the, the small end of it. I don't even know how to even begin to, to wrap that. Um, just some super glue and some tape, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> So. Give us a heads up before you start that, and we'll make sure to to blast yeah. out your your stream on all, on all of our yeah, discords, yeah, and, so we can go watch uh, watch that. Because I love, we say it all the time. I love watching hot people fail. So yeah, yeah. I would assume that you're going to be uh, on it right now, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, I know. Right, let it go. So you, can oh, I go ahead, go ahead, Eric. Yep. Real quick. Uh, do you have one of the rods finished there beside you? One of your rods that are actually finished? I do, yes. Could do you mind showing it for a second? I'd yeah. just like to see the finished rod. Um questions. Do you make catfish rods? No, <laughs> no I don't want to do that no. to you. <laughs> this is uh this right here is a this is a seven this is an eight foot rod for cobia in a boat, something that like Finea would use. Um, and I actually got to call the guy up and tell him it's done. But basically the process is I, I get a blank and the blank is just what it sounds like. It's the blank. So this is a blank right here with nothing right. on it. And they make, right. they make every, there's many manufacturers, every shape, size you can imagine. Um, and then we, we, you know, depending on what the specs are, we put everything together, put the guides on it. Um, build the handle out, whatever. And this thing right here would have no problem catching a 90 pound cobia. Well, I was going to ask you, what is the, what do you use as your handle? I just. Um, so most of the ones that, most of the surf rods we do and the, and the, um, oops, the cobia rods, we, we're using shrink for the handles. So we either use like cork tape to build up the bottom of it, or we're using. Um, shrink. And it, this is when I say shrink, it's like heat shrink. If you're familiar with electrical work, right. yep. you can use it to like when you solder wires and stuff, you can heat it up or whatever. But that's what's that's what it comes in. It comes in a bunch of different colors, lengths, and um, diameters, and everything else. And then we will put this on a rod and shrink it down to whatever size we need. Um, so just as an example, I know I keep walking off frame, and I apologize. Um, good, you're good. So this is you, you need you need one of those new things that, that yeah. follows your body all over the place. You got to get one of those. That'd be bad. I wouldn't be able to be, walk off stream pick the nose or something. I'm just kidding. Um, but basically, like on the surf rods and stuff, you know, this is the diameter of the blank, and I we we you know depending on what color shrink they want or whatever, you put the shrink on, you use the heat gun, you shrink it down, and that's that's all you need. Really. Okay. You know, sometimes we'll put um, yarn or cord or something underneath of it. Sometimes tape to to give it some texture and stuff like that. But for the most part. That's all we're doing on, on the on the surf right. rod and some of the cobia rods. Now, right. well, you got the rods in your hand. Um, do you do like decorative wraps to them too, or have you gotten into that? Are you just? I know some um, people are really big on decorative wraps, and some are just you know. We do functionality. Um, hold on, I'm looking for a rod. It's in the garage. I don't have it with me. Um, we do do. In the chat was asking to see a decorative wrap that you've done. <laughs> Steen wants to see your fine threads. Christine wants to see what? Fine uh, threads. Fine threads. My fine threads. <laughs> so I do most of the rods that I build are plain, plain Jane. There's a lot of people around here that do basic, basic chevrons or you know scale wraps and stuff like that. And it seems like everybody who wants to be a rod builder does the same type of thing around here. So this is one that I did. This is actually Fuzzy's rod that I need to finish. Um, and if he's watching, I apologize. The uh, but that's just basically multi-axis chevron. Um, so I'll do stuff like that if the customer requests it. Most of the time, I don't do anything. But I've got a business partner, and he does the really, really fancy stuff. And he's he's one of the best on the East Coast. But this is. That's something he does. That's all individual threads. Awesome. And, you know, there's there's so many different patterns and everything else. It's absolutely bizarre. But he's he's OCD enough where he can sit down and he just he does it. And he, That's he does very it. time consuming. Oh, it is. Like this this wrap right here would take me 14 hours. Yeah. 12 to 14 and, hours. And people are like. Custom rods are expensive. I'm like, yeah, but you know how much time is put into that? Oh yeah, right. I mean, especially if you want something like that. 
Yeah, so a wrap like this is 200 bucks off the top. Yeah. In addition, and that's that's starting depending on how far you know how how long you want it, how with the colors and everything else, and because it takes it takes ten to twelve hours, right. you know, to do. Um, and most times people are like, oh, never mind, you know, and <laughs> for obvious reasons, you know. But right. you well, I expect the whole rod to be two hundred dollars. Yeah. You know? <laughs> that's right. That's right. Not gonna happen. Yeah. So when we're talking, when we're talking, let's talk threads and the wraps for a second, because I've watched you brought up. Um, his name a couple times, Wolfram Custom Rods, Custom yep. Rod Builder from Minnesota, also on Twitch. Um, I've watched him do raps, and it's my favorite part to watch yeah. because it's the coolest thing. And you almost, you, you know, you see somebody doing that, and it's it's art to me. It's it's art, and that yeah, is a, yep. a an, an an amazing gift for somebody to be able to do that. And when you know you see him do like the Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, rap, it's like that just it's mind blowing to me. Oh, yeah. um, so I'm just curious if you have your part, your business partner that is doing those raps. Now, I don't want to start a fight, but <laughs> if you're going to compare somebody like him to somebody like Wolfram, how close are they? Are they like, is that a special breed of, of guys like Wolfram and, and your business partner that can do those super special raps? It's, it, 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 it is, a, there is a special breed of people that, that have the patience for it. Um, <laughs> And whether, whether they do it on little tiny thing, little tiny blanks or, or, or large blanks, um, there's definitely a talent for it. And not everybody can do it. Like you know, when we go to the rod show in February, there'll be people that um, will bring their rods to show off and stuff like that. And as a rod builder, you look at the rod, you're like, oh man, that's cool. And you look at it, and you know, there's threads that aren't packed right. There's seams that are crooked and everything else. Um, and I've you know, I've, I've never seen any wolf frames work up close. You know, like in, in my hands, and stuff like that, but. Everything that I've seen him post online is, is awesome. You know, he, he does very good work. Um, Got one of his rods, I can vouch. Just yeah, and I, I, I respect him for that. Um, you know, if 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 he's on, if he's streaming, and I'm not super busy at work. I'll hop on and watch and stuff like that. And he's been on my streams, you know, plenty of times and stuff. Um, we all, we always kind of joke on each other because like. You know the the butt section of the surf rod I'm building is, is the size of the rod that he's you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's true. That's but, true. Uh, he's he's a good dude. I really like his work. Um, I'm really excited to, to build this little or break this little ice rod. I don't want to break it, obviously, but uh, I'm, I'm, excited, I'm excited to do that. Um, Question: Is like the is it like the rod building community like very tight? Is there like a big organization of or one place where you all meet up somewhere like on Facebook or? On the uh, interweb there, somewhere yeah, or there's, there's a bunch of different groups um covid ruined it in my opinion because everybody and their mom wants to be a rod builder um and i could probably count and, and i'm not you know i i, I say that kind of half jokingly um i don't i don't do the rods full time so it's not paying my mortgage so i'm not that concerned with it but in this area within just since 2020 there's probably been at least two dozen rod builders that have popped up like, oh, you know, I'm a new rod builder. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to make my living like this. And then like, you know, usually a year or two, they, they disappear because you realize you got to build a lot of rods, you know, and those mm -hmm. guys, it's fishermen um, that want to, you know, don't want to wait or pay the money to have someone build a rod for them. So they get into it and like, oh, this is easy. I'm going to make, you know, make some money. And they build some rods for their friends and everything else. And then they realize, um, and I've got a, a good friend of mine who got into it a couple of years ago, full blown business, business, everything else. And this year, like he's looking at the money that he brought in, the time that he spent, and everything. He's like, dude, this isn't even worth it. I'm like, I know why I don't, I don't do it full time. You know, it's 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 one of those things that like if you have the time to dedicate to it, you don't sleep. I mean, if, if you know if you're one of those people that can run off two hours of sleep, you'd be perfect for it. Right. Piggy backing off everyone and their mother wanting to do it. Now, say, I'm sorry, I don't know if you were going to ask this or not, but. If there was someone out there that wanted to like not have a business, right? But they're like interested in maybe wanting to get into building their own rod. Isn't it expensive? Like, like startup, like say you just wanted to get the equipment and build your own rod. Um, you, is that you could do it probably for, I haven't looked recently. You could probably do it for about 150 bucks. It's not as bad as I thought it was. Be, so a lot, a lot of the, uh, the 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 wholesale, the distributor sites, uh, Get Bit Outdoors or Mudhole, you can go online, you can buy kits, and excuse me, it'll be you know it'll be a hand wrapping kit, but you can get the thread, you can get the finish, you can get all the parts you need. You can buy cheap blanks. Uh, excuse me, um, you know, so you can you could 
easily get into it for a hundred bucks or less if, if I had to make a guess. Not spend a lot of money, but when you when you start getting into you know the machines and the, you know the, the drying racks and stuff like that, um, and then the different types of blanks and the, you know the high end blanks and the high end guides and everything else, that's that's where a lot of the money comes in. You know, so um, just to give you an example, like the, the cheapest surf rod that that, that I build, this is like for eight ounces in, in bait per drum is is the fifteen and nine. <clears throat> And that out the door without a fancy wrap is three fifty, right? Um, and that's, that's for a custom rod. That's, that's, yeah. that's, that's not, not a bad, bad. right? The, uh, and that, <laughs> that, that is uh, the, the Irish really call it, the rental rod that Fineo uses. He's got a couple of them. He loves them. They're great for shark fishing. They're great for drum. You can, I mean, you can catch almost anything on the beach with them. Um, but that's like that's like bottom end. And there's nothing wrong with them. It's just that's just the price. Top end, you got like the Cast Pro and the CTSs. Well, in a built rod, you're looking at seven hundred bucks. You know, and the, the the more stuff you add on, the more wraps, the more <clears throat> the the you know the, the titanium guides and everything else you add on to it. You're you know, the most expensive rod we built was eight hundred sixty dollars. That was a thirteen foot cast pro. I mean, that's that's a lot of money for a rod, but I yeah. It, to say that that's been your most expensive, I don't think that's completely asinine or ridiculous. No, and that was exactly what the guy wanted. He wanted Virginia Tech themed. He wanted a, a giant decorative wrap. He wanted titanium guides. He wanted this color, this color, this color, and everything else. So, I'm like, yeah, well, you know, if you want to pay. Want to pay? Yeah. You can play. That's fine. You right. brought up the 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 rod that you were just talking about, where Austin is using it for both sharks and uh, other fish. Do you do you make specific rods for specific fish? And that was also one of the questions from somebody in 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 chat as well of like tuna rods, swordfish rods, or are those types of rods interchangeable? Let me try to answer, ask my question more specifically right. or better. Like if I come to you and say, I want like in my head for, for my fishing, if I get a custom rod, it's a, you know, I want a six foot eight rod, medium, heavy, fast action. And I know what I'm going to be using that for war. Whereas y'all on the, on the, on the coast and the ocean and, and, it's all sorts of different fish, right? So oh, yeah, yeah. that rod that you're talking about can be used for sharks, but is there a better option for tuna or swordfish or sailfish oh, yeah. or anything else? Yeah. So when you when you start getting into the uh, the custom rod building realm, normally you're building a rod for a specific reason, right? So um, talking tuna, there there is thirty to fifty. There's fifty pound class. There's 30 to, there's 50 to 80, 80 pound class. You've got 80 to 120. Um, you know, depending on what kind of tuna you want to target, then you pick a pick a blank, you pick the materials, you know, the guys, everything else. Um, for like for like surf fishing, so when I go to the beach, I've got at least two two heavers, and a heaver is the long rod, a 13 footer that I'll throw eight ounces in bait. Um, I've also got one of my I like got 11 footer that's rated two to five that I can throw big plugs with, I can throw poppers with, I can throw a snag hook with, I can throw, you know, a little bait rig to catch bait with, I can throw a puppy drum rig with it. Um, if I know Spanish mackerel or blue, big bluefish are around, I'll bring a 10 footer that's, that's I built specifically for throwing metal, you know, sting silvers and stuff. So we, when you start, one of the most common questions that I get as a rod builder is how much for a custom rod? I'm like, well, what do you want to do with it? Right. I can right. build you a bass rod, but it's going to be what I think is a bass rod, it may not fit, you know, it may not be for throwing two ounce in for, you know, California largemouth or Texas largemouth. Here, here's your bass rod. It's all done. Right. What are you talking about? This is 13 and a half feet long. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. you know. I think that's one um, of the great reasons to get a custom rod is but like, okay, I want this rod for this specific style of fishing. Right. Yeah. Like my big thing, like with, I, I only got one. I wish I could got more eventually, but I think Chief has, you know, custom rods as well for catfishing. Do you need a custom rod? No. But if you do get a custom rod meant just for what style of fishing, you're going to fall in love with it. It's going to be like right. no other rod you had. It's, it's not a, I'm just going to Bass Pro Shop and getting it. When you get a, a rod that is tailored to what you want to do, it is, I mean, someone that fishes as much as me or Chief or anyone, like it's it's a luxury and it's a nice it luxury. It is. It is. Um, and it, it's one of those things that like, you know, I've, I've a very close friend of mine, 
we've been talking talking about building a rod for him for the last year and a half. He wants it for a swim bait bass rod, but he he's very specific for what he wants. So mm -hmm. he's come over here and he's looked at. I mean, I've got thirty blanks over there that I've bought that isn't what exactly what I wanted it for, and I'm like, just go find one, you know. And he's like, oh, this is close, but not real right close, blah blah blah. And I invited him down in February down in Winston Salem, North Carolina, is the International Custom Rod Building Expo, which is, there's a bunch of vendors there, some some rod, a lot of rod builders and stuff. But um, like American Tackle will have all their blanks there. Some of the other vendors will have all their blanks there. And I was like, come down there, walk around, and find a blank that you like, and come find me, <laughs> and we'll build that blank, you know. Right. Um, and that's that's also too, which is why I, I kind of only do surf rods or, or saltwater rods is because someone says I want a Kobe rod, I want to throw be able to throw two ounce bucktails. Boom, I got a blank for that. I know exactly what what they want. They want a surf rod, eight eight ounces in bait, ten ounces in bait. They want one to throw fourteen ounces in bait. I got a blank for that. But when you start getting into like the freshwater scene, like with the bass fishing and stuff, like it's so specialized. You know, like I want to be able to throw. An ounce, you know, like seven eighths of an ounce swim bait to an ounce and a half swim bait. Like, well, I got to do some research and find a blank first of all. Well, that's that's the problem. Then, heavy size, so you got heavy, medium, light. Right. I mean, there's so much, and then the finesse of the tip of the rod too. Oh yeah, that, that's I mean, you're that, going that's from... a big part of it. And then, you know, talking about the, the all the blanks I got behind me is I purchased blanks, and then show the customer, and they're like, "Nah, this is close, but this isn't it." I'm like, all right, cool, put it on the shelf. You know, let me order something else for you and stuff. So, you know, it's it's one of those things that, like, um, it, it's it's freshwater fishing is, is tough to, to build rods for, you know, especially with people that are hardcore into it that are, like, specific. Like, my, my buddy Rod. There's so many different techniques in each oh, rod that sure you're great. wanting or sure. even the rod oh, yeah. with the real combo, whether you're doing bait casting or spin casting yeah. or heavy, whether you're doing top waters or worm fishing or... Yeah, oh, yeah. But if you, if you look at... American Tackle or Batson, and they make a lot of freshwater blanks. They have 45 different blanks in their series, their first, all their different series, because there's, you know, spinning crankbaits, casting crankbait. You know, there, there's this, there's that. It's, it's so, it's so much. So it's, it's, I, yeah, I, I get it. Um, and, and do you, do you and stick with a, a specific brand of blanks, or do you just kind of go? whatever is running a deal or do you kind of, are there different vendors for like, we're talking about, if you want to do this, you know, you're going to go to this type of a vendor for a blank or is it just, look, I trust X, Y, Z blanks. Those are the blanks I use and I get whatever they offer for whatever buckets I'm looking for. So, um, I was I saw a question. Uh, NJ Pool Player asked how much a titanium set of guides are. Depending on the rod, you're looking anywhere from 100 bucks to 200 bucks. That's just for the guides to go on the bikes. Uh, but to answer your question, as a rod builder, there 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 are, there are certain brands that that do that make really good blanks for like the applications that we use and that we build stuff like that. So as far as a surf rod goes, my favorite is Carolina Cast Pro without a doubt. Um, but CTS makes really good surf rods. Um, Rain Shadow makes a few. Rod Geeks used to, but they quit selling them because they're a-holes. Um, the, uh, you know, there, there, there's, a, there's a handful of, of, you know, manufacturers that we use all the time. And a lot of times when someone comes for, for a surf rod, they already know in their mind what they want, you know, because their buddy has one or they they, they fish for on the beach or, or whatever. Seldom do I have someone contact me and say, I want a heaver, but I don't know what kind, you know. In that case, like, all right, well, meet me at the pond, you know, that's, that's you know, down the road you know bring your reel and i'm gonna bring you know i'm gonna bring a 59 a cast pro a rod geeks a cts I'm like here throw all four and tell me which ones you like you know so and that that's part of getting making sure that they you know they're going to spend five six seven hundred dollars on a rod i want to make sure that they get what they want you know? do you do any sort of like and i've seen some of you guys you'll take a, a blank and you'll start kind of pressing it on the floor to see the bend and this and that oh, yeah. it seems like there's a science to it how often do you get a blank from somebody that you're, you're going through your kind of preliminary testing before you actually do the build where you're like, this is crap. I'm not going to build a rod out of this blank. Do they, do you go back to that manufacturer? Do they send you a new one or do they say you're crazy? All of our stuff is awesome. Kind of how does that whole process work? So that goes back to really trying to understand what the customer wants and then choosing the right blank um because like from the from distributors 
like mud hole example, if I bought something that wasn't right, I'm sure I could return it, but then I'm paying the shipping and probably a restock fee and everything else, which is why there's probably 30 blanks over there that I will never, ever use. I mean, somebody might, you know, I've had a, somebody come in there like, oh, I like this one, you know, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> um, but norm, normally, I, I build, building the surf rods, I've got a good feel of what, what is out there, what is made. Um, you know, so if someone says, I want a 10 foot rod I can throw sting silvers with for bluefish, I know exactly what I'm going to sell. You know, um, if, if they don't like the price, then I've got a few other things that I can, you know, I, I, can, I can try to pitch to them and stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. One of the brands I mentioned, Carolina Cast Pro, um, I'm really good friends with the guy that owns the company. And a couple of years ago, God, five, six years ago now, when he was coming out with his Gen 2 blanks, which is his next generation of blanks, I got to test some of the prototypes. And um, I met him down in Hatteras that fall, whatever. And this is this is probably five years ago, maybe four. He was like, check this out. There's a new Gen 2, 13 foot, 6 to 10. I grabbed it, shook it. I'm like, nope, hand it right back to him. He's like, what? And I'm like, I, I don't like it. Too soft. The tip's too soft. He's like, okay, all right. He's like, you know, you know, what do you think about this one? I was like, eh, you know, and I gave him up, you know. And he, he went back and, and made modifications. So I'm not the only one that said that, too. Um, but, you know, it, it's it, at, the, at the rod show, um, and I go down there, and I, I work the rod show in February down in Winston-Salem. I work the Carolina Cast Pro booth, and I do that because I'm, I'm very good friends with Tommy Farmer. I don't get anything out of it. Uh, I go down, I really, you talk about fishing for two days. Like, how cool is that? You know, he pays for my food. He pays for my hotel. It's, it's phenomenal. It's awesome. I love it. But it gives me a chance to walk around all the vendors, and I can look at blanks. I can feel blanks. So, like, if if Fineo came to me and says, hey, I want a Kobe rod that's, that can throw, you know, not two ounces, but one ounce. I'm not going to build him the rod that he's been using for the last 10 years. I'm going to go find, I'm going to go find, you know, I'm going to go look at the, the, the blank that's one power less and flex it and look at it and see, like, what I do. I think this is going to work. I got to turn my heat down. Yeah, it's, it's getting hot in here. It's, it's, right. it's, this is a hard work, man. I get it. <laughs> I have, it was 60 degrees when I walked in earlier. So a, little, a little chilly, but you know. So hopefully that answered your question. It's you know, it's it's. Yeah, it's, you know, I've always wondered what y'all were doing shaking. I'm like, it looks like you know what you're doing, but yeah. Well, I, see, and I do that when I go into Cabela's. That's yeah. what I do. Just the rod. It's, it, look, when you go golf and you got to wear the funky pants and the, and the cool <laughs> stuff because you look like a golfer, right? Same thing with rods, man. You just go into Cabela's, you take the rod, you kind of you shake it, you put the tip on the floor, you bend it a little bit, no, no, and everybody no, else no. in the store is looking like that dude knows what he's doing. Please, and you're kind of like you know. Please, 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 please. Do me one favor. When you go look at a rod, don't grab a tip like this. Don't do this. That's an unnatural I, bend. And you can break the rod that way. If you if you want to see how it flexes, ceiling or the floor. Yeah. As a rod, please. Because <laughs> that's the worst thing. At the rod show, you have a bunch of rods, and someone's like, and, like, you're like, oh, like <laughs> and if you're in, you know, Cabela's or Bass Pro, and you do that, just turn around and leave. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, you, right. mean, you know, a big box store, you could do that if it breaks. Right. Yeah. Junk. Not a custom. Right. <laughs> Let me ask you something. Going back to the the handle of the rod that you're holding with, do you ever use a uh, parachute cord on yep. your rods? You do. Yep. I I found catfishing that seemed to be one of the best ends for a rod to hold on to when you're catfishing. That is you're talking like five fifty cord. Yeah, you're yeah. using parachute cord. Can you show me real quick? Like if it's what I'm thinking of, I mean, yeah, just yeah, the the army, five, five, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 five fifty cord. So, you know, this is wrapped it yeah. several times. It's, it's a, a lot of knife makers use paracord as the yeah. handle too. Let yeah. me tell you, that is probably the best handle I've ever used from my my rods that were built for us for the show. Right there, what he has in his hand, I love it. I believe that. Is it because so, they're not like slippery, or are they? Because I know not free at all. So um, the, the paracord thing started on the West Coast. That's a huge thing in San Diego, Southern Southern California. Um, Chicago. And they will, vagina. they will have nine, ten foot rods that they use for their surface iron. 
but they will wrap the entire handle with cord. Yeah, I've heard that. You know, and then, then there's, there's like Turk's head and there's, there's different types of knots that they finish it off with. I've actually never built one for anybody on the East Coast with, with the cord. I put the cord underneath the shrink to give you some handle and stuff, but um, but yeah, no, it, it's, it's a thing. Some people like it, some people don't. Now, I've also done, I've had a few people, and you're probably not going to be able to see this. This is 3M Safety Walk. Oh, yes. Yes, so I've heard of that, too. It's very similar to, like, grip tape you put on a skateboard, but it's not, it's not, it's rubberized. It's not like the, uh. the metal and stuff. Like, to, in my opinion, if your hands are, if your hands are wet, like you're fishing Hatter's Point, you're, it's raining, or you're, you're in the surf zone or whatever, this is going to tear your hands up, but. I've had people come to me like, I want this on my hand. I'm like, all right, dude, whatever. Yeah, I've, I've, like I've, never had a rod. I've never had a rod built with that, with the handle. But the parachute, yeah. I've got five rods that were built for me with the parachute cord, and I love it. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's a big thing out west. That's a real big thing out west. Matter of fact, those rods were built, two of them was built in California, and three of them was built in Kansas City for me. Nice, okay. Um, Casey, trust anything from Kansas City right. here. Uh, speaking of Kansas City, Casey Smokey says if a rod breaks during normal use that you made, is there a warranty period? It's an out of sight warranty. <coughs> if you don't know what that means, once you're out of sight, it's out of warranty. Um, <laughs> I'm kidding. So, How do so you know? Normally, it, it really depends on what happens with the rod when, when the rod breaks. Um, if when, when I get a blank, you know, prime example, this blank right here. I am going to bend it. I don't know if y'all can see that. I'm going to bend, mm -hmm. bend the shit out of it. Pardon my French. You know, okay, I want to make sure that there's nothing, there's no manufacturer, no manufacturer defects on it. Um, so I, I try to flex the crap out of every single rod that I get, just to make sure that it's not going to blow up on someone the first time they cast the first time they blow up on a fish um break breaks do happen sometimes it happens usually if it does depending on where it's at um you know it, it, it's usually a case by case basis yeah. um, you know um i've got a blade that's recently broke a rod brand new rod and where it broke i don't think it should have broke that way and i'm i'm excuse me i'm working with the um the, the manufacturer Kelly Cakes, what's up? I'm um, working with the the guy that makes it to, to, to warranty it, you know. So it's it all depends on it, you know. It's the the big issue is when, especially the carbon fiber rods, if you drop it or you hit it just the right way, it's going to weaken that blank, especially the carbon based rods, the carbon fiber rods, and stuff like that. So when someone you know someone's got a rod that's six months old and they come back and it's covered in fish scales and everything else, you're like, man, you you, you know, so you can't you know. <laughs> Um, I, it really depends. I, I try to work with people. If it's you know, if it's a clean snap, yeah, that's a car door board. I don't know if you guys have heard this, but I've heard it too. It's like a lot of times if you're transporting them with like big old weights on them still, and they're loose, take the they oh my, take against, like take that, the that, that'll wink in those uh, rods too. And One of the worst things. Do it. I have flagged people down on the beach because they got rods in in their their their, their rod racks with stinker on <laughs> the rods are doing this and the sinkers are banging like dude stop like <laughs> stop. <laughs> the rods, <Stop>. man. <clears throat> oh trigger warning sorry that's funny i'm assuming when you said your friend that broke the rod i'm again we brought him up sarah gave him a shout out in in our chat fineo uh fineo live on twitch <laughs> uh well, i'm assuming that's the rod talking. you're talking about no, which was that, that's not who i'm talking about but oh okay so funny story about fineo <clears throat> um, and I've said this a billion times in my, my chat. When, if, if um, no, it's uh, so the whole story is I'll make I'll do the quick version of it. About seven eight years ago, the manufacturer that was that was making the blanks that I was using for cobia, the seven foot cobia rods, which was it was the best rod in the world. They quit making the blank. They're like, we're done. And I'm like, can I buy the rest of them? I'm like, nope, we don't have any more. I'm like, not what what do I do? Like I had five or six orders when this happens. I'm like, what? Um, the same thing actually happened a couple of years, a couple of years later with a different brand. Um, so I needed to find a Kobe rod. So I found what I thought was a good blank for it. And I took it to Fineo. This is back before he started streaming when he lived up here full, you know, year round. I'm like, dude, what do you think of this rod? And like, 
as many fish as he's caught, as hard as he is on his equipment. If I hand him a rod, and he shakes it and says, nah, bro, or he, he bends the piss out of it and says, nope, I don't like it. I'm like, okay, all right, got it. That goes on the wall back there, and I go back to the drawing board try to find something different. Um, so I, I got a lot of respect for Fineo. I mean, he's, he's one of the reasons why I'm streaming. That Red Irish, shout out to Red Irish, super mod. Yeah. Um, the, uh, it's not, no doubt, Big Trout, what's up, man? Um, you know, so it, it, a cut, the same thing almost happened a couple of years, a couple of years ago. The, the blank that I was using for my Cobia rods, and I was selling the hell out of these things. Um, they're like, oh, we're out of stock. We won't get any until September. And this is like June. I'm like, I've got order for like nine of them or eight of them or whatever it was. Like our Cobia season's from like June to September. Like I need these blanks. Like, what do I do? And I called my buddy at American Tackle. I'm like, hey, man, this is what I need, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, I think I got a blank for you. And he sent me two of them. Um, and I built two of them for Fineo and gave them to him. He, he still has one of those today that he, he fishes with. Um, you know, and I basically like fish, give, fish these, tell me, give me what, give me a week. Give, tell me what you think of them. And he was like, dude, I like it. All right. Good, got it. my new my new Kobe rod. Um, with him, <laughs> the Christmas rod, the uh, the big one thirty rod, yeah. that that rod was undergun for that specific situation. Um, that rod, I think, after watching the video and watching the video and having some other builders look at the video that are that build a lot of big rods and stuff like that, like a buddy of mine in Jersey and somebody down south. Um, that rod was too stiff for what that particular fish did and you know because of the the bent butt the, the fulcrum point it snapped right the fulcrum point and it shattered the hell out of it um i've actually got it somewhere here um and i'm i'm, I'm i think i got a lead on a, on a blank that will be better for it um i just i just need to do some more research on that but, but yeah if you want to you want to test the blank out give it to fineo 100 percent Oh, for sure. I mean, it's not the easiest on equipment that I've seen. No, I mean, here, right, yeah. you think this rod works? I don't know. Let's go catch a 600-pound grouper today and, and let's test it out. It's, so it's crazy. Well, let's just catch 10 of them. Why not? I mean, yeah, yeah pass the test for one, but now let's right, catch yeah. six more. Yeah. yeah. Meanwhile, I'm, I'd be sitting in the boat going, I, I I'm I'm exhausted. I couldn't even catch a bluegill right now. Oh, yeah. And he's catching four or five groupers out of the John boat. The dude's something else. Yeah, he keeps telling me, he's like, whenever you're ready to come down and get wrecked, let me know. And I'm just like. <laughs> Literally will wreck your soul, I think. It'd yeah, be I, yeah. one of the greatest days, know. but also wrecked. Oh, man, I just, you know, it's just, yeah. No, I've known, I've known Fineo for a real long time. Um, and that's actually how I met Red Irish. Um, and that's actually how I, the whole stream thing started. Um, I found out he was streaming. I knew he'd moved to Florida, but I, I, you know, I don't pay much attention to social media these days. Um, but I found that he was streaming and I started watching it and stuff like that. I'm like, oh, shit, he's still using my rods. So I joined Twitch with the name Andrew K, you know, underscore SCR and stuff. And one day I made a comment. He's like, that's Andrew. This is the guy who builds my rods. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, Man, this is kind of cool, you know? Um, and uh iris reached out to me one year they were they were thinking about getting a christmas present and they're like you know we want to we you know we want to get a rod bill they, that's the year they end up get, getting him that that super pretty gaff that he got that, that badass gaff and the Irish is like you know we're, we're, we're thinking about getting a rod bill i'm like well I, i'm gonna build it like i will beat everybody's price like i've been building rods for fineo for i don't know 10 years now like no one else is gonna build him a rod i'm gonna build him a rod um and then me me and me and Irish were talking about it. I was like, man, this this streaming thing seems kind of cool. I think I could do this when I build. And that's big big shout out to Irish because he 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 really helped me, you know, he was pivotal in getting me started doing the stream thing. Um Burnout wants to know why people at Bill Rods are named Andrew. I'm the only one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not doxing anybody OG. else. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Do you know, know Bill's name Andrew? I don't think so. We're not going to bring up names because I don't want to. I, I, I don't know if that person wants their name out there, so I'm not going to yeah, bring it up. Enough. So we're going to move on. I have a question. Well, regarding, the name cool. Um, let's say I have a nice rod. I don't even know what that means, but let's say I have a nice rod and oh. I'm using it for catfish at night. I can't see my rod tip but I need to see my rod tip. So I'm going to go find some 
fluorescent glow in the dark tape and i'm just going to wrap that tape around right below the eyelid on the tip of that rod am i changing the definition of that rod and how that tip is going to work just by adding a little bit of uh, glow in the dark tape if it's a little piece of tape no not at all if, no. you, if you're like wrapping this much of it yes you, you may be changing it but i would i would tell you to put a get a glow stick on it instead of instead of tape um, you can go on Amazon and buy like the glow stick bracelets that you know, like use on Halloween and stuff like that. Get the get the yellow ones because ye neon yellow or the, or the chartreuse yellow, <clears throat> green like the bright green or whatever. They look the best at night, and just zip time on. That's what we do on the beach. I don't have any of my rods in here, but we legitimately will take a zip tie. I'll take a glow stick this big and zip tie on top of my surf rod. That was a legit question because when when we yeah. were when I was with a bunch of people and we were doing catfish, I was I was with uh, Soggy Wonka Customs, and I literally could not see my freaking rod, and it was driving me insane. Of course, he had his rod that was a glow in the dark rod, and I'm using mine that was. That's why I use my black just, black rod. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right. I didn't have something cool, <laughs> so I'm like, okay, how can I see my freaking rod without spending? three hundred dollars or four hundred dollars more for a glow in the dark rod or a black light rod I'm like what if i just put some tape on the tip yeah, you're not and i didn't know far. and i'd heard and and i'm gonna be honest i i thought i heard because didn't you put tape on your rods for a little while fish right i called it my redneck fish and custom rods because what i did i took <laughs> like cheap ugly sticks like i mean they're they're you know for, and I, I wrapped the whole things in reflective colored tape and it worked yeah, great and i, well, I heard I mean, somebody said that that impacts the the rod itself and the performance of the rod i had no idea you do it to an expensive custom rod but i was talking like an ugly stick so i mean okay okay you know, <laughs> I, I legit didn't but know it legit worked and i i've caught yeah. tons of big fish on it i mean so i to, wouldn't ruin a really good rod you, doing it the answer to that right so this is the tip of your rod you put a little piece of a little piece of tape on there you're You put a little piece of glow tape or whatever reflective tape on there that's not changing anything at okay all. if you put you know five inches of it on there that's going to change the i mean i, I get no apps it worked it looks cool on cream i mean what's wrong with five inches first what's wrong with five inches okay good that's what i've always been told they make the little glow tips that are about two inches long that have a snap that snaps right on the end of your rod. That's, that's very simple. You can buy them in any sporting store. Y'all getting raided. JB Fishing coming JB, in on the on the raid. Welcome in, everybody. Everybody that's listening outside of Twitch or watching outside of Twitch. We're doing a Twitch thing. We got a Twitch raid. So we're going to welcome everybody in. Thanks for, uh, thanks for coming in. Um, <laughs> inappropriate time to come in but you know my, my, I, I, I'm talking normal. about my five inches in your rod. That's funny. yeah put earmuffs on JB <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> right <laughs> well, uh, thank you so much now, for the going back to like the, the size of the rods and is there a I'm not going to use any of the correct terminology because I don't know any of the correct terminology uh, that, that rod that I'm we're talking about for us and that that snapped i remember seeing not eyelets but it was like rollers yes roller is guys. there a certain size rod where you graduate from you don't get to have eyelets anymore it is absolute requirement to have those on there um a lot of it depends on the type of guys you put on there if you buy the high-end guys that are that can withstand the heat that you know an explosive run from a 300 pound bluefin tuner or something that you know can handle um i like putting the roller guys on anything that's like over 80 80 pounds if they're going to be using it on stuff that is like you know that that'll that have, have those expensive you know those explosive runs and stuff like that um for what he was doing, it, man, that's, that, that's exactly basically it. you know what, what he's doing, what he's doing with it with those stupid grouper um you know like yeah Grouper has to be like a rod builder's nightmare. Just oh, like, they're just gonna destroy equipment. It doesn't matter. The best, I mean, it can be the best equipment. You're just right. gonna. I called my buddy up. I was like, "So I got a buddy that that vertically fishes for a 600 pound grouper. 
what rod do you recommend? He just kind of laughed at me. He's like, the biggest, fattest, strongest one you can find. I'm like, well, I've got one. I'll build it and see what happens. <laughs> well, I blew the F up. So, you know. <laughs> and it didn't break. It blew up. Like, it it shattered that thing into a gazillion pieces. That's horrible. So NJ Pool Player is asking a question that I actually had kind of written down, but I'm guessing he's asking for a friend who that friend might also be named NJ Pool Player. But the question is, how long is the waiting period? Like if somebody wants to order an SCR rod, they, they see what you're doing. They love you. You're handsome. You make good stuff. Your logo is pretty cool. I want to order a custom rod from Andrew. How do they get in touch with you to do that? What's the wait time, and are you taking orders currently? Um, depending on what kind of rod it is, yes. <laughs> um, NJ's wait time is about three years. So, <laughs> um, no, no, I, I, we, we, we've been we've been talking about it. Um, right, right now, I'm about six months out, and that's me saying that loosely. Um, I'm not really spending a lot of time in the shop at the moment, like you know, like we were talking about earlier. Um, I've yep. got two little kids um, that take up a lot of my time, and I absolutely love it. Would, wouldn't change it for the world. Um, so I'm not getting a lot of time in the shop. That that will change in the future. Um, but you know, as right now, I'm not focusing a lot on the rod building. Um, I am working on. I've got a couple in here that I'm working on. I, I've absolutely got to finish fuzzies. Um, I hope, hopefully he's not in stream because it's been a very long time. No, I don't think I don't think Fuzzy knows that we exist yet. Okay, so it's okay. Um, so the setup man has to wait. <laughs> yeah, that's right. NJ has to wait a very long time. Um, hold on, my my wife's commenting. What? Yeah, <laughs> she <laughs> she's taking bribes. Yeah, right. right? Cake. So she's she's taking cake bribes. Sorry, all right. Hey, she if we're getting cake. That's top of top of the list right there. Um, I've always wanted a cake from Kelly Cakes. I'm sorry. Unbelievable. <laughs> so at uh, one time she was talking about these cake jars. I, I never heard anything about that, you know. Um, <laughs> this is down for the cake bar. Yeah, I mean, the missus is the boss anyway, so, you know. Um, that's that's true. That is true. Uh, we it, can't we can't win. It, no, no. It's, it's, um, I, it really depends on what kind of ride it is. Um, you know, if, if you're looking for a surf fryer or something, you know, send me a message and we'll talk. That, that's that's the big thing um like i said we're i'm a couple months out i'm not i'm not i've been turning business away too which i hate i absolutely hate to say but there's some, some local people here that are like i need some bass rods I'm like nah, i gotta hear call this guy you know mm -hmm. i'd rather build surf rods and, and beach rods and stuff like that so i mean that's that's flattering it's got to be <laughs> flattering for you right because oh, yeah. like i personally i have a i have a wolf from custom rod ice rod i would love an SCR ice rod. I would love it. <laughs> Why? Because it's you. That's the only reason. Let, um, let me, let me but, build a couple first and I'll build you one. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> but that's, that's if I'm you, that's that's flattering because they want an SCR rod because it's an SCR rod. It's not right. that, oh, they're just a friend of yours. No, they want they want your product and that's got to feel pretty it's, awesome. It's very humbling to, you know, I've had people contact me like, yo, you know, so and so's got a rod, so and so's got a rod. Because I ain't going to anybody else. I want you to build me a rod. Like it's very humbling to see. And it's also it's it's also humbling to go go to one of our fishing piers here locally, where where you know during drum season there's 75 rods lined up. You know, and you look you're like, oh, I built that one. I built that one. Oh, I built that one too. <laughs> like I built that one a long time ago. And who owns that one now? You know, it's a, it's it's a really cool feeling. Or you go somewhere and you see someone wearing a shirt. So it's like, ha! Like <laughs> I know that guy. <laughs> you know. Um, ironically, I know the I know the feeling. The first time I heard my voice on the radio when I broke platinum, it was just it was very humbling. It was an amazing feeling. So I I totally understand. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I actually got through that whole that whole statement with a straight face. I'm not sure how I did. Jason, right. she's just disgust. Right? Oh, what what you <laughs> Uh, how the heck do you get a, a cake out of a rod? I mean, it, that the cake's going to be a three hundred, four hundred dollar cake, and I, I live two hours from the woman, and I can't even. <laughs> get a cake. We haven't talked. 
I'm going to have to go back and rewatch this and see what my wife is wheeling and dealing here. Oh, you've already lost four rods for one yeah. case. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 You're, you're just, good. Her and her family left fishing, so. It's chocolate, I mean. chocolate, and chocolate. I'm, I'm good with this. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, it's just, you know, going, going back to the, 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 the brand, whatever. So my buddy Rob was down in Florida for work, and he was – somewhere whatever i don't know if it was a tackle shop or what but he like walks out and looks and there's a truck with an scr sticker on it. he's like hey he's like scr he's like do you know andrew the guy's like yeah i know andrew <laughs> the guy the guy lives up here and he's done a bunch of work for me and stuff uh cab- cabinetry work and stuff and then, but he was he just happened to be down there fishing the same time my buddy rob was down there fishing you're like yo hey you know like, oh geez you know but it's, it's i don't know it's, it's very humbling to, to to, to see people recognize the brand, to to see the brain out in public and stuff, it's it's, it's fascinating, man. It's, it's it's wild. It's real. Wild. I can I can't even imagine. I think it's cool. I'm gonna throw you a curveball. Solo, what's up, man? DB, what's up? Sure. Have you ever considered making something not a rod? <laughs> oh, you. Okay, that's not what I was thinking, but okay, I was thinking more like you're a hunter, right? Yeah. Would you, could you make a, a like a shooting stick, a a monopod or a bipod, tripod. in the same manner, Tri- or a tripod, whatever? Tripod. I'd go for a tripod immediately. If you can make a tripod, I'm coming. <laughs> um. This is a curveball. I'm throwing you completely no, no, out fine. of so, out of your realm. But we, have you ever considered making things like rods, but not rods? Um, we've done. We did a walking cane one time, which was a giant pain in the ass <laughs> um, because it didn't come apart. And so I, I don't want to. I don't want to tell you what we had to do to rig up the drying machine. So the biggest issue with doing stuff like that, and the, yeah, it's very possible. Like you know, we, people do pull cues uh i mean essentially this could be this could be a pull cue the, the bottom end of the front um the problem is spinning it right so oh yeah you know so this is the, this is the machine that we i use to spin it for those that watch me every once in a while they know you know so but yeah i think you you should show this this is great for people that have never seen you or have any idea about rod building and what goes into it i think this is perfect i don't know if your does your camera zoom in at all no no okay that's it i've got another camera on my bench but i don't know how to switch it you're good you're good um so basically you know like we you've got we've got the bench right so it spins as I do the thread work, you know, sometimes I, I do the hand wrap stuff, but I have to be able to put whatever it is. I have to be able to put it in here. And then once it's done in here, I've got to be able to put it in the drying machines. And so basically once I, once we wrap the guides, we do a, a two part epoxy, it's a finish. And that's what we cut the thread work on. And once, once you do that, it's a self leveling finish. It has to spin for at least two hours. Um, I like to do three and a half quarters to make sure, but, you got to be able to spin it, and that's that's the hard part, um, and that's that's the issue with people starting off building. You know, you can I can teach you how to make a cardboard box, cut V notches in it, and you can wrap a rod like that. Doing the finish is something different because it, it has to spin. Right. It's got to it's got to do that spin. So if you theoretically could take apart the, tri- the tripod or the, the bipod or whatever, and give me pieces that are long and straight and have you know nothing hanging off them or whatever. Yeah, I could easily wrap something on there. Without, you know, the, the key is being able to finish it. That's that's the hard part. Is it, it has, I have to you're talking about drying. You're talking about like drying the epoxy that you put yeah. over the thread and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. So people... yeah, that's what that's what that, that clear coat that's over top of the threads on a rod that you have or you buy or whatever. That's that's what it is finished. And if you just see a paint on there, it's got to spin. It's got to be you know, um, it's a self leveling typically is what it is. So before you were able to buy one of those racks that spin, was there ever a point where it was you and your wife standing out in your shop, one on you on one end, her on the other, and spinning it <laughs> no. with your fingers like equally? Did you have to do that? No, no, no. No. Um, 
Would, would she be down to do it, it? How much does she love you, Andrew? Would she do that for you? <laughs> I don't know. Ask her. <laughs> I'm afraid of the answer. I mean, I take back my question. <laughs> um, no, 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 no. Don't, don't be scared. Um, the, uh, so NJ, to answer NJ's question, it's a specific type of finish that uses the UV light. Um, there was a company that came out about seven or eight years ago that made a one part finish that you could do that and cure it with a, a UV light. Uh, somebody bought the rights to it and, and all, all the equipment to it and they never did anything with it. Um, but so I don't think a UV light would work with the, the general finish. Um, no. So when I first started, like, like I said, I was building it at the, the guy's house, but when I decided to do it myself, I bought some cheap drying motors machines off of eBay and they were rod drying machines. And there was, you know, it was, Really, it wasn't anything complicated. Um, it was basically like an inch and a half PVC cup with plastic screws, three plastic screws in it, attached to you know some sort of slow RPM motor that was 110 volts. And that's what. I, and I had a table in, in my my townhouse. My guest room had a collapsible table, and I had like four or five drying motors on it. And that's where I did all the, the drying. And then downstairs in the living room, um, right off the living room was the dining room. The dining room was kind of had like an open floor plan. That's where I had my, the bench set up. And it was basically another table, another collapsible table with another little table next to it. And I had, you know, everything strapped to it. So the first time the wife came over to the house, she's just like, the hell is this? <laughs> you know? Um, but, uh, <laughs> just to catch you up, she said she's game and she wants to do a hand spinning stream with you. So everybody look out for that. That's going to be fun content as well. Yeah, there's and yeah, you guys would have thing. to have like She's both beer pong hats. Time. Yeah, I mean, that would be even fun. That would be more fun. There was a question that we did miss from DB from chat a little bit earlier. Have you ever been approached by a commercial company to either buy you out or to say we want you to make our rods? Has there, has the business ever had an opportunity to really go to that next level, or are you still waiting on that, or is that not a goal of yours? um and uh so real quick nj said that if you know, if, I, if you send beer bourbon you can also jump up in the list of, of bills um <laughs> that's why you work with small businesses <laughs> if, if it's beer it's either a hazy ipa or a stout dark dark heavy stouts is, is what i really really like um <laughs> the um i've been i've been approached twice by people that were importing a specific manufacturer. And they were like, I want you to be our dealer in the Hampton Roads, you know, the Southern East Coast area. He's like, you know, you know, we'll give you great deals. We'll give you blah, 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 whatever, whatever, whatever. But the caveat was always like, you can only sell our brand, right? So as a rod builder, I can't do that, you know, because customer number one may be able to afford the high-end brand. But customer number two may not be able to, right? And that's one thing I love about Tommy Farmer of Carolina Cast Pro is he understands I'm a raw builder. Like, yes, he wants me to sell his product, but not everybody can afford his product. And he understands that, which I have a lot of respect because, you know, like, if we go, to the, I go fishing with him at the beach, I'll bring a couple of rods. And, you know, he's just like, which one's that? Oh, that that's, that's my CTS. He's like, well, let me see it. Let me, let me cast it. You know, he'll compare it, whatever. But like, he's never once been like, you can't sell mine unless you stop selling everybody else's. Like, that's, it doesn't make sense to the raw builder. I've, I've had that happen twice. I don't want to say that there were big commercial companies. They were, they were, these were just people that were at the time importing a specific brand. And they were, you know, like, Hey, I want you to be my distributor, but you can't sell anybody else. I'm like, yeah, that's, that's cool and all that. But like, I can't do that. You know, the area that I'm in, not everybody can afford a $700 fishing rod, you know, surf, surf rod. You know what I mean? So it's just like, but aside from like, no, I, and I wouldn't sell it to anybody anyway. I don't care if the guy offered me. Well, depends. <laughs> yeah, careful like, what well, you say. I, yeah, it's, it's tough. It's tough. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I own a patent on this logo. Um, you know, I, I, I'd be, it'd be, they'd have to be a lot of money for me to sell sell my my you know my idea. But um... everybody has their price. As a matter of fact, if you know, Joker says. Uh, He'll love anyone for twenty dollars. He said today. I think that's what he said during yeah. his uh, when he was fishing oh, this he morning. He didn't say that. You know, it I, I, me. Think, I mean, I think that's I, what the audio clip no, says. I don't think it says that. I'm pretty sure it does. Do you have a clip well, or something? 
Like, no one, no one vexes. He probably already got clipped, and they would. Uh, but... Well, I could, I could, I could probably <laughs> on-air production meeting. Everybody, bear with us, but um, I can't. I know Fish I love be able to. For $20. There it is. Sure, I love anybody for twenty dollars. Yep, I mean, you, you can't argue that. That's straight out of Joker's mouth. Yeah. Um, I, wait a minute. Did you guys who who where'd that come from? I heard Chief say some pretty crazy things. Well, he's straight. Well, the rest of I love anybody for twenty dollars. Yeah, twenty dollars. He said, "There he is. There, there's the man of the hour." Joker <laughs> says. <laughs> I can't believe. Oh, I we are. I'm gonna get so yelled at. Joker, I have nothing to do with this. Nothing to do with this. We have gone off rails for sure. I I personally going back to your logo. I your logo is one of my favorite oh, logos. Please. I, I absolutely love how you incorporated the fish into the letters. It's it's nothing short of brilliant in my opinion. So when we were when I had the the whole idea to create the business, I was talking to my my business partner about it, Quincy, and I was like, "This is what I want to call it." And I want to be able to do like SCR and I somehow want to incorporate these three fish into it. So he had a buddy that was a graphics designer and we reached out to, he reached out to him. was like, Hey, this is what we want to do. Blah, 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 blah. And like a week later, Percy or Quincy calls. It was like, yo, check this out. And like, sends it, send this to me. And I was just like, huh? Like what? Like how much do we owe this guy? Like, can, <laughs> like, like, what what so we go to a we go to a bunch of rods but it's basically it's it's my three favorite fish it's the red drum red drum tail striper and a cobia um and it, it better than anything i ever could have imagined and i'll just yes 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 and then once you know once we knew that it was ours i could do whatever i want with it i immediately applied for a patent which is one of the worst things i've ever done in my entire life um just because the pain, pain in the ass process, but uh, no, yeah, no, I, I love it. And one of the other things too is I designed it to be one color. So when you get shirts made, it's cheaper, right? So if you have a logo that's extravagant with a bunch of different you know colors on and everything else, you pay for all the different colors. When it's just white or just black, it's straight. Just black over there. Um, it's, it's so much so much cheaper. So that, that was the idea behind the logo. That logo go on each one of your rods too, or uh, yes, unless they specifically ask not to put a logo on it, which some people do. Got, well, Why would somebody one. ask you to not put your logo on yeah, that rod? You, I would love that logo. <laughs> some people, some people like the plain look. You know, so if I do one, it's all black. And they don't want. Whatever. I'll put a black sticker on there, and they usually don't see it. Um, <laughs> I, I I would say sorry, sorry, not sorry. You're getting a logo on it, Chief. What kind of rods do you have? I would love to know the the custom rods that you have right now in your arsenal for catfish, and how they may vary, whether it's rod type, size, length, whatever it might be, compared to what Andrew might be making for, say, a cobia rod. Most of my rods are from anywhere from medium heavy to heavy and they're about seven and a half to eight foot long okay. almost every one of my rods and they're they're all special built i have rods that cost sixteen hundred dollars that i'm using that were built in california and kansas city they're they're really expensive rods i don't know why i didn't pay for them i was got gave it to so to you <laughs> I mean, they got free advertisement on the TV show, so that made it kind of nice for them. So, oh yeah, yeah, and they sold a lot of rods off of them. Um, I just think for cat fishing, depending on what you're fishing for, if you're fishing for channel cat, then I would say to get a light to medium rod habit uh, for a medium to to light rod. If you're going to get something for you know, blue cat or flatheads, and you only have an area that the, you got medium catfish, 20 pounds at the max, and I would get medium to medium heavy. If I'm going after big blues, then all mine are real heavy. Every one of my rods are very heavy, pretty much. All mine for catfish are 
have swapped out the medium heavy ones, but they're specifically yeah. designed for catfish right. for catching those monster ones. Yeah. Um, but I don't fish in like rivers or anything. I fish in like if I was fishing like somewhere where there's a lot of current, I, I could see the heavy. I just can't justify it for all the lakes. I can't wait till you get one of them big catfish that take you down in them trees when you're using one of your light rods because that's when I'm going to sit on your stream and say, I told you. <laughs> yeah. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. It'll be I, fun for you. I might cry, but it'll be fun for you. <laughs> yeah, I've cried many a times. Believe me, there, there's there been a lot of times, and that's with a heavy rod. But Andrew. if you try to keep them back, that's when you usually get into trouble. So when you say, let's talk about your heavy rods. What, what is what is the weight rating on? Like, how many ounces are they rated for? I think... <laughs> The reason, because the reason I ask is when, 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 when you look at a rod blank, it'll be seven foot, seven and a half foot. It'll be medium heavy, fast action, but it's always an ounce rating. It's, it's rated for you know three to eight ounces or two to five ounces. And that's as a rod builder, that's my first question is well, how many ounces are you going to throw? Because I can get one that's, that's rated one to three ounces, but it's heavy, and I can get one that's rated eight to thirteen ounces that's heavy. You know what I mean? So like. Most of mine are around 13 ounces, 13 to 14 ounces. Okay, okay. Mine are rated like Because, number ten. one, sometimes, now, to, to let you understand this, sometimes I'm using, like, huge sinkers. Because this river system where I'm at in the Ohio River, if we get high water, and if you go out there when that water is really coming up, you can tear up catfish. And okay. you need something to get you down into them trees Oh, yeah, sure. You know, to get that bait down. Now, you're using a bait like a, a skipjack head that may weigh 14 ounces just ahead of that skipjack, too. How big are these catfish you're catching? Holy shit. Big. They're, I, they're not corn no, dogs. I was just telling pool player, they're not corn dogs. They're <laughs> they're cobia-sized cats. Catfish can get over 100 pounds. Yeah. Are, they, are these blue cats or flatheads? Blue cats. Now, okay. I, have caught, I have caught flatheads. My biggest one's 50 pounds. Uh, my largest blue cat's 85. Um, but I'm going to tell you that when when I'm using them, I want a good heavy rod right. because of the baits that I use. I use big baits. Sometimes sure. I'll put a whole skipjack on and just cut the back of the tail, and it weighs over a pound and a half, just that skipjack. Good Lord. <laughs> It sounds like your rods are more. Are they more fiber, fiberglass rods, or are they more graphite? There's, there's a most of mine are fiber. I do have one graphite, one graphite, mm -hmm. and I do not like it. To be honest with you, really? for catfish, yeah, I do not like it for catfish. No, I do not. I like the fiberglass. It's, it's. I can handle it better. Right. But, like the 85 pounder that I caught, I had to fight that thing so hard to keep it out of the tree tops. Woo. It was unreal. Uh, and it took me like 45 minutes to get that fish in. <laughs> uh, Honestly, I see a lot of people using surf rods um, when they're catfishing out by me in the lakes. Just so they, uh, a lot of times out here, if you're fishing from the shore, you need to cast at a country mile to get into some deeper water. Oh, yeah. So I, I see people using surf rods all the time for catfish out here. And there, there's actually, um, it's funny you mentioned that, not to, 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 um, to change something from cheap. One of the shows we were working, this three or four years ago, Tommy Farm, we had a guy come up that was from somewhere out, well, I don't know if it was Missouri, Mississippi, or somewhere. He was just like, I'm looking for a catfish rod that I can throw this, and as far as I can, and we're like, well, hey, we've got 11 foot three to six that fits that bill, you know, and the guy was like, oh, my God, this is great. He was a builder. They exchanged information and the guy ended up buying like 100 blanks from him or some crazy shit like that. <laughs> um, I was like, I, I take credit and that make help make that sale. I, mean, I don't get any out. It's just you know, he's a good friend of mine. Um, yeah, it, it, that's different. Stuff. That's that's cheap. That's a different type of fishing than what I'm used to. Right. You know? And I know it is. It, it's just the thing of it is, is. I would rather have the shorter, the seven and a half to eight foot rod mm -hmm. to fight the fish than have a 13 foot. Now, this is just catfish, not your. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm saying, you know, yeah, when yeah. I'm trying to work them from a bank under my boat 
in a big bunch of trees because I'll fish right up against it. I'll find the fish on the graph, and then I'll go up above it, anchor in, and then I'll target that fish that I just had on the side image. And when when you're doing it, and I've caught 90% of them fish that I target, it's pretty crazy, but it works. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Um, I mean, you're, you're the, some of the, the rods that you're looking for, rods that people would build for tuna fishing. Right. Right. Because exactly. Like, you know, the, the, the ones that are, that are uncut, the seven foot footers that are, you know, like the, the bass and tough stick is one that comes to mind. I don't know what, they're, what the heaviest one is rated off hand. But you're, you're looking for something that can handle a lot of weight and has got the backbone or the ass that's, to be able to. That's exactly pull, right. Pull, pull, the, yep. pull the fish up. So. Yeah, no, it's, that's uh, that's that's a different. I'd have to do some research on that one to find a blank that I would like that I would even consider. Well, what we could do is get you to come up here and fish with me in the, in the middle of winter, like February or March, and get you to see what that's like, and then you go home and try to build. That would be your best way because I've had other rod holders yeah. that didn't understand this, and they came here and actually oh. fished and went back and started building rods. Oh yeah, no, yeah, I get that. Hey, Mr. Up a cake from Kelly Cakes. While you're at, is, 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 you drive right by Kelly and pick up a cake. That's right, Mrs. Are you still on here? I need to go another fishing trip. Need- <laughs> it, it's not to go fishing; it's to go pick up the cake, and he's gonna stop. Yeah. Or fishing. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It's really just to get the cake. Exactly. Yeah. So when when you're, I want to talk about Red Drum real quick. Yes. Have you ever used chicken as bait? No. 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 <laughs> Would you ever red drum? <laughs> it's not well, catfish. I'm just checking. Would you ever consider trying chicken as bait? No. What would you ever use chicken for any bait for any kind of a fish? <laughs> What's up, Solo? Um, chicken. I've used chicken livers for catfish. Yeah, but have you ever used chicken? Look, like fried well, chicken they get from Royal Farms and like hook it and cook. no. Oh, no, no. <laughs> y'all hate you. I love you. I caught, uh, this year alone, I've caught one that was almost 53 pounds and one that was like 36 pounds on chicken. All right. I couldn't resist. And it was a starving to death. He was almost dead. And that was the last we piece of the intro. Run. All right. We got a 52, almost 53 pounder on chicken. It worked. Cat. <laughs> I'm not going red drum fishing with chicken. I tried. Well, I look, if it works for catfish, how do we know it doesn't work for red drum? If nobody has ever tried chicken for red drum, how do we know that it doesn't I work? I bet it would work. Those guys aren't eating fried chicken. That's right. I, if it's, someone it's, it's ocean fishing to try chicken in the ocean, I bet you catch see, them. See, here's my problem with this, Kat and Andrew. Here's my problem. Number one, I've never seen a chicken swimming in a river, a lake, or an ocean. All right? Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. So, I mean, these fish look for natural bait that they see every day. It'd be like fish stalker going to a restaurant and <laughs> having a brain sandwich. Oh, yeah. be like, oh God, Here's my, no Here's way. My, my two cents. I think the chicken can um, it almost impersonate like clams or something they're feeding on down there. I don't know what it does. I know it works. Oysters. Or well, oysters. You just get like, to just get yeah. an oyster or clam. Just throw some garlic. And the, have you seen <laughs> garlic down there either? But garlic scent always helps. I don't know yeah. why. Yeah, but do you know for certain that garlic helps? 100%. It doesn't hurt. Yeah, but, no, I agree. But I, have you ever tried one with garlic and one without? I've been out expect even crappie fishing. <laughs> and I've been like not having any luck. And then I'm like, I put some garlic scent on those jigs. Fish. That's all evidence yeah, I need. The, the, there's some there's something to be said about garlic because they make like the garlic spray, the, the pen. Yeah. And, like the only thing I've, I've ever actively noticed that like yes, it made a difference where the way the fish hang those speckled trout or, or spotted sea trout that we have here. Um, but as far as far as like our big red drum and stuff, I mean they're eating the, the bait fish in the surf, right? So. If you're catching spot, we're using spot heads. If you're if there's no spot around, they're not going to bite the spot. They're going to bite whatever's was whatever's around and stuff, which is always a pain in the ass. Um, I so, I just think so, so we can't we can't rule it out. 
we can't rule right, chicken out right. as a bait yeah. for red drum unless somebody tries it I mean, I and gets someone to try it in the ocean. I think it would catch. Wait, it. wait a minute. How uh, can I ask? A, I'm stupid with this, so please answer this. What do you use for bait for your red drum? Um, either a spot head, chunk of spot, uh, mullet, and I'm like the striped mullet. Um, the um, sometimes bluefish, depending on where we're at. Sometimes tuna belly, but usually it's spot or mullet up here in Virginia. So you're using dead fish cut bait basically yes, for yeah. for your your drum. Yep. All right. So that's, it, that's it, what it, it could work. I mean, I don't know, but it, it, it could. could work. But that's you know, typically in the fall up here, the mullet and the spot are running in the surf. Right. So that's what we're catching. You know, so like when I go drum fishing, I'll have two rods and a bait rod with me, and the bait rod goes out first. And God forbid if I catch a sea mullet, aka whiting, you know, I'll chop his head off, throw it out there. If I catch a spot dead, the head's going out one hundred percent. Um, if there's mullets, if there's mullet in the surf close in, I'll throw the net, try to get some of them. But, you know. Can you catch drum on lures? You can, yes. The picture I just showed you actually was a was a 50-inch red drum on a bucktail, a one-ounce bucktail. Okay. And that, was right. a, that was a freak thing. Wow. You typically don't up here. It happens sometimes. Um, it happened that day. Um, down in Hatteras, when the drummers schooled up, they get <laughs> them on spoons sometimes. If they're they're the schools are close like swim bass and stuff too. You can, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, so um, in the summertime when the drummer schooled up in the bay, and I don't know if, if I'm sure Fineo ran into this at some point this summer. Um, you'll be out cobia fishing, and you'll see this like acre of just blo this red blob on the surface, and it's an acre or two or more, sometimes smaller, of like 45 inch plus red fish. You know these red drum in videos and, that and it always blows my mind so black tip h has some really good drone footage of it and it's, it's mind-boggling but when these schools are up if you if you don't spook them you can go up to them you could take this and tie a hook to it and throw it in there and it's it, they will eat it it's the craziest thing in the world anything you throw in there but people do they'll throw poppers they'll throw swim baits um sometimes on the barrier island the barrier islands of the eastern shore of virginia in the springtime, when you get a good southeast wind day and the water's real clear, you'll see little pods of drum close to the surf, and you can hit them with, you know, with lures, bucktails, swim baits, stuff like that. Neat. That's a, it's a pain getting over to the Barrier Islands. You gotta have a boat, and you gotta play the tides right and stuff, and everything else. I've eaten redfish, and I've always wanted to. I hear they're very tasty. Oh, I hear they're like one of the. I, I, I wanted to cry when I, I caught my first redfish and speckled trout this past spring and then ate them i wanted to cry it was that good it's so <laughs> good I've never, I've never had red fish either i've never had that or cobia no. that's on my like bucket list of fish that i want to eat so maryland virginia and north carolina you can only keep them between 18 and 26 inches with a slot form they're, they're, sure. they're good they're very, very good so these these big ones that we catch these you know these we don't, we don't call them bulls we call them red drums but um there's a there's a running joke with that. Everybody down south, like Florida, Louisiana, like oh, our bull reds, bull reds, like they don't have horns, they're not bulls. <laughs> it's a funny thing, but these guys you can't keep. So people are like you fish ten hours at the beach till two in the morning on a work night for what? For to release this thing? I'm like hell yeah, it's fun. Um, but no, red red drum is one of my favorites. You know, if I catch one that's in slot size, it's 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 coming home, 100 percent. Because the wife likes, kids like it. You know, so. I won't kill a bunch of them, but I'll kill them. The fight on them is pretty amazing, too. Pound for pound, red drum can fight harder than any other fish that swims on these coasts. Correct. I want it. I want to do it. Yeah, it's, not a, it's not a bluegill on crack, but, you know. I mean, they got them here <laughs> in Texas, but it's still several hours away from me. Dude, it's, it's red drum. They fight so hard, man. I, there are fish that fight hard, man, but the red drum, they fight. Even the little ones, man, you, you get them on plugs and lures and stuff like that, you know... You're trout fishing, you hook a red, you know it's a buck. You know it's a buck. It's just how crazy they fight. Yep, that's a lot. Of, it was it was hands down the best fishing trip I've ever had. Was that uh, that week in North Carolina by Hatteras? Just oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Red red fish and and trout all week long, baby. It was great. Solo says he can confirm the red fight. What's up, Solo? Yeah, yeah, he he, he gets it. We're we're uh, 
where in Hatteras were you? Did you go to the charter? We were on across. We were on the mainland, so we were in the inlet um, to go out to the like Hatteras. I could see Hatteras directly across the water from mm-hmm. where we were fishing. If that makes sense. Yeah. Great time. I want to go back so bad, so bad. Oh, dude, it, it, the right time of year, it's magical down there. You can get all kinds of stuff in the sound and surf and everything else. OG Burnout says, all fish taste the same. Prove me wrong. Oh, shit. Oh, I'm <laughs> sure you just make him say oh, that. Oh, my gosh. OG in here stirring it up. I'm not even going to comment on that. No, yeah, I'm not going to. I wasn't going to either. I was going to. <laughs> he he twice. couldn't even hold his tongue. Yeah, it was really hard. <laughs> <laughs> I'll taste the tartar sauce. If you have to, oh, if you, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. If you have to use tartar sauce on your fish, your fish you ain't fresh. Yeah. Your shit ain't fresh if you got to use tartar sauce. Yeah, that that's. Uh, I was just gonna say, if you know what you're doing to make your fish, you don't need to put nothing on it. That's right. Anywho, back to <laughs> Ross, <laughs> Chief Fish. You guys have any uh, any any other questions for for the one and only Andrew? No, I think it was fun, Andrew. Oh, thank you so thank much you. for being here, though. It, it was yeah, awesome, here, guys. This was great. Fun. I like and everybody, one. go check out. Um, I don't know if Sarah's still around. Go check out e- exclamation point scr. Check out Andrew's uh, Instagram and his his merch. If you like that logo, I think it's one of the best logos I've seen. On Twitch? he's here and follow him on twitch um you usually when when do you usually stream on twitch andrew on sunday nights and when usually sunday nights when you guys are on too so uh, yeah <laughs> um, so if you got I, more than one tab just you know right. <laughs> I, I uh i occasionally do it uh during a week and it all depends like you know with, right now is the winter time um yeah i've been you know it's getting darker like doing a lot of stuff with the fam and stuff like that uh so man i appreciate the shout out um you know, but like I occasionally, like last weekend, I was down in Hatteras with Tommy Farmer, and I tried to stream one night with him. And anybody that caught that, I apologize because the Wi-Fi at the rental house was absolute garbage, and cell reception was just like on the edge of being crap and somewhat decent. So like the stream That's started, the, worst. The, the stream stopped and started like fifteen times. So like I don't even want to go back and watch the video because I know it's like there's like thirty of them probably and stuff. But I had to watch. I, Yep, yep. Just, you know, like like OBS was like, "You're not streaming." I'm like, "What? Like, why?" Like, I haven't touched my phone. It was, it was a pain in the ass. But, <laughs> um, no, I, Sunday nights usually usually nine o'clock East Coast time, um, and then sometimes during the week, depending on what's going on, stuff like that. So, everybody listening on, uh, we're on SoundCloud now. We're going to soon be on oh, iTunes what? and Spotify. Nice. Um, we're on the YouTube once again. Cast and Camo TV on YouTube. YouTube, give us a subscribe, like, and comment on uh, on our videos. Brought to you by once again Texas Select Seasoning and Carolina Bass Co. Check those guys out. Use code Cast and Camo to get fifteen percent off your orders for both. Um, nice. Some great stuff, um, including seasoning for fish from Texas Select Seasoning. And speaking of Mister Wild that. Bill, he's our guest next week. He's coming back. We're going to talk more specifically about some stuff, but he's back next week. We're going to talk about the meat, meat seasonings and all sorts of stuff. Talk about meat. We, we, we love to talk about meat around here. Uh, but Andrew, you know again, thanks for, uh, thanks for being our guest. Thanks for sticking with us tonight and uh, talking all things rods. And I appreciate everybody for coming out. Appreciate everybody that's listening on the other you platforms. There for no, no problem, guys. This was fun. Yeah. I do appreciate it. Next time we can talk about hunting. Absolutely. 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 Yes. Ran really out of time that. this time, but next time we'll, uh, we'll, it was on my list, but we just ran out of time. No, you're all. Good. all right. We'll talk to everybody next Sunday night with Wild Bill, Texas Select Seasoning, as our guest. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, so later. Thank you. Thank you, guys.